and you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Smacked Raw Podcast, uh, the exclusive recap show for WrestlingNewsWorld.com and found right here at YouTube.com forward slash Smacked Raw Podcast. Uh, you guys are joining us for the AEW Dynamite recap, uh, and, and what a good recap it's going to be. Uh, I am your host, uh, Kyle Tyson. Joining me today is uh, Mr. RN, and of course, the lovable Kevin Crazy, man. How you guys doing tonight? I'm doing, doing, doing great, man. Um, looking to steal your wife again, like usual. Uh, having Dude, a good can night. We get, can we get like 10 minutes? Ten minutes into the show. God damn, I can't even get through a fucking intro with you. Go on, Kevin. How you doing, man? Fucking <laughs> I love you too, Kyle. I love you yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm doing good though, for reals. Uh, that was it was it was a fun uh, fun dynamite, you know. Uh, can't complain, you know. How you doing, RN? I'm doing good. What is this? My second or third AEW show? <laughs> not sure. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, uh, so RN is typically, you can find him over on the NXT recaps. He decided to jump ship, and what a good night to jump ship, too, man. When we yeah. got what may be hailed as the 2020 pipe bomb. Um, oh, fucking Jesus Christ. Awesome promo by MJF. Uh, before we get into that, let's go ahead and get our plugs out of the way. Uh, if you're watching us live, thank you for joining us. We are partnering with... Uh, the standing streamers twitch channel i'm sorry that we're all sitting you can catch uh k dog standing up tomorrow <laughs> night on putting you over but we are all comfy in our chairs um we have a patreon at uh patreon.com for slash smack drop podcast please support the show head over there subscribe uh we have tiers only ranging from one to ten dollars uh, we got uh, some new stuff coming out. We got some like new stickers and everything. I got one right here. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Ready? Got this holographic one. Yeah. And I'll hit a button. Ooh. Bam. Okay. Yeah. It's, there you go. It's blown up. Yeah, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see it. Whatever. I love that sticker, man. That, that up sticker my own show for this fire. goddamn sticker. But yeah, for five dollars, man, you can go ahead and get a sticker pack, along with uh, Patreon shoutouts and whole bunch of other good stuff uh there we go sorry i'm getting distracted by focusing my camera there it is um but uh the ten dollar pack is going to go ahead and get you you can submit a video question or submit your video unpopular opinion and we'll debut it on the debate show which you can catch tomorrow night live on the smack drop podcast twitch channel as well that's a lot of fun but of course if you just want to cough up a dollar hey we appreciate that too that's going to give you access uh early access to all our pre-recorded uh youtube videos um that go up which would include those uh debate shows because they get booked they get shot like weeks in advance but uh plus yeah, so plus i won't steal your wife you can pay kevin to not steal your wife we'll make that a tier that's like the 200 hundred dollar tier man yeah, that makes sense. That makes I'm sense. with it. Spirit. Totally. <laughs> Fucking dude, what a shit show. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, man, what'd y'all think of AEW? I was, was great. Was great fun. I I didn't uh I didn't think uh comparing you know to last week, uh, especially like the first hour of last week. I don't think that it was quite as exciting as that was. But I thought the pacing of the whole show was a little bit better if that makes sense. Absolutely. Like, you know, um, I didn't think that it like lulled a little like it did last week. Not that that was necessarily a bad thing, but I felt like I was more engaged the whole time rather than just like the first hour, you know? Yeah. I felt like the show picked up steam as it went on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. RN, what was your match of the night, man? Uh, shit. I'd either say the 10 man tag to start the show or the tag team match to end the show. Yeah, I liked, I liked the awesome. main event. That was really good. Had a crazy finish. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. 
Jesus. Oh man. Um, yeah, we we had some good stuff on the show, man. We had uh, got more inner circle stuff. Anytime you have the inner circle on TV, uh, it's it's good stuff. Oh, yeah. um, Warhorse debuted. Uh, indie darling got a lot of social media hype behind him. Um, mm-hmm. We uh, got the return in Cameron uh, now going by Ariana Andrews. I'm yes. not sure. This was during an era of wrestling I wasn't watching. I'll forewarn you. But I know I saw social media light up. They're like, that's Cameron. Um, unless she, uh, unless she like took a special pill that made her a better wrestler, like AW. I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with her at all. She's so. a former Funkadactyl. And uh, she used to tag team with Naomi. Okay. Her and Naomi were like cheerleaders when they first began, and then they gotcha. kind of graduated into wrestlers. She's like the black. You might as well just say she's like the black Lana. That's how terrible she is. Right? <laughs> oh, Jesus, come man, come on. <laughs> That's terrible. It's facts. Yeah, but um, yeah, man, it was a good show. It was a good show. Um, we kicked off the show with Inner Circle taking on. This match was set up last week. Uh, Inner Circle, full five members. Uh, they took on Best Friends in Jurassic Express. I'll let you guys kind of cover this. I came in, like, at the ass end of the match, so I did miss, like, most of this match. I was out playing darts with my wife and uh, my family, and we couldn't get the game wrapped up in time. Now, this match, I mean, it, from the top to bottom, this match was probably one one of, if not the best, like, multi-man matches I've seen in a long time. I mean, yeah. oh, with, uh... oh, we lost Ke- we lost Kevin. I'm here. I bang the table, bruh. My no, 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 you keep it rolling, RN. Kevin, you need even to do with the addition of Marco Sun, which Sorry everybody knows I'm not really a fan of. Even their use of him in this match was fucking dope. Like, yeah, I actually say I actually was kind of feeling Jurassic Express for once, and I that's can't believe I fucking said that to be honest. <laughs> Who did you say they were utilizing well? Marco Stunt. like they literally used him as a. As a goddamn weapon, they pretty much used him like yeah. a chair. Yeah, <laughs> no, they really did. I was, I was, uh, I was uh, uh, high on that too because, you know me, I'm pretty forgiving. But like Marco Stunt doesn't do it for me either, man. Yeah. Like I feel like Marco Stunt should be used for like some spice sometimes, maybe. These matches, these you know? are the type of matches he should be used for. Like this, this yeah. use of Marco Stunt, like I'm all for it, like. Because this is the only type of match where he can give you anything, and he wasn't even really a part of the damn match. Was yeah. he? I don't know. Oh, I don't think so. Officially? No, he wasn't. You, mm-hmm. The best friends is comprised of three people, so I would assume That's Jurassic okay. yeah, Express was, would be Luchasaurus, Luchasaurus and Jungle, and Jungle Boy. Yeah. Yep. But yep. He tossed his ass around, and then at the end when Lucha, Luchasaurus jumped off him with Marco Snuck on his back like a that goddamn... I, I did see that. Oh, that, that was that badass. Was hilarious, that man. was one of the dopest things I've ever seen, bro. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Marco Stunt was worn like a book bag on Luchasaurus' back <laughs> as he dove <laughs> off the ring onto a crowd of people, man. Come Literally on. like he was. You can't get better than that. No. Um, oh, it was good. I Luchasaurus almost lost his damn mask. He had a cane moment out there. He uh, did, yeah. Kudos to him to keep it on his face while he was in the middle of like that whole lineup um, it was funny though because jr took uh advantage of that he was like he knocked his damn face off or something somebody said it <laughs> i think i've like, seen that fella before i recognize yeah. him yeah it was i don't know i just thought it was funny. i heard the call yeah but um this was crazy uh sammy Guevara, his first match back and he is the one who ate the pin he was yeah. on the top rope and uh about to deliver a move i think to luchasaurus and uh matt hardy's music plays uh, and, he, and Matt Hardy comes out, I'm assuming, as this new character where it is literally just Matt Hardy. It's not really supposed to be a character. <laughs> um, shove Sammy Guevara that, up. That'll the, change next week. He'll yeah, be a different knows. character next week. Shove Sammy off the turnbuckle and um, ends up uh, – ends up. Um, uh, Sammy gets uh, tail whipped, gets that spinning roundhouse kick. Black Mass knocks him the fuck out. And mm-hmm. uh, ends up uh, giving the good guys the the faces the win uh, for the night, which was like, like I said, it was from what I saw, it was a really good way to kick off the show. Oh yeah, you know, I was actually really surprised that that was the match to kick the show off. To be honest yeah. with you, like I thought that was going to be the main event um, with the way that they were like pushing it and advertising it and stuff well, like that from last got week. Chris Jericho in it. You know, Chris Jericho's right. usually the top of the card. So yeah, exactly. And I mean, like. 
inner circle, you know, like we've already touched on, like they're one of the biggest things in wrestling right now, like regardless of WWE, AEW, well, or You whatever. know what they say, though? If, if you're not main eventing, you want to open the show. You want to open, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Last, you that's very true. First, um, on the show, which is because... Yeah, you, know, you, you can definitely that tell that. that was, Jericho says that all the time. That's like one of his main things that he always says. So you can best damn believe there's a reason why they started the show. And once they found out they weren't going to be the main event... Well, he was like, "Oh, well, we're we're opening that they shit." We're opening. <laughs> no, that's that's a that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Uh, I want like to because no matter what the inner circle is doing, even though they're they're still at the top of the car, but they do things like this where they're not and coming out starting the show and shit. And I think that's one of the main things where I love that you have a faction like this where they have main event players and they have a tag team and they have some mid tier guys where it yeah. doesn't matter where you put them on the show. They're a part of the fucking story, and I think that's a lot. That's what you get when you have more than just two or three people in a damn stable like yep. WWE does. When you have a fleshed out more than a few people in your stable, then that means first of all, your shit's all you're always on TV. Yep. Your group is, and second of all, no matter where you're at on the card on the show, you you got you could be mid level, <coughs> mid, first starting out the show, middle of the show, and main event. You know what I'm saying? So like that's why I love. The inner circle, like, because we finally have a real fucking faction or stable, whatever you want to call that's not a trio. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Like, I feel like that the the factions like that have kind of gone away for a long, long time. Yeah, they have. There's only one. Yeah. Well, undisputed era, I would say. It, well, yeah, but I yeah, mean, they're right. kind of they're kind of on the downswing. But what, I mean, they've been a thing for a long, long time. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's but, no shame in that. From what yeah, I yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Of... That that's not. I'm not talking shit. <laughs> Don't yeah. get me wrong. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, no, I mean, like you, like you, to your point, I mean, WWE loves doing like these three guy factions that like, I mean, they're cool. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love the new day, you know, and right. stuff like that. But like, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like a faction, like, no. you know, like, uh, undisputed era or, you know, inner circle. It just kind of feels like three dudes that happen to want to be called the same thing. You know, exactly. and it would be yeah. different if they have like a trios title or some shit, mm -hmm. which they should be in a, every group is a three man group. Like if that was the case, it's yeah, different. I mean, it kind of makes sense. It made sense for it. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's just three. Like you said, it's just, hey, you guys want to kick it together and like just yeah. call it or something. Well, let, it, let us know what you guys think. Uh, uh, do you think uh, three man factions are played out or do you like the extended numbers more? Personally speaking, I like the larger factions. I'm in agreement with Me you guys. Too. Really quick, though, I am fucking up already on the show. Um, <laughs> since, since Raw occurred, we have three new patrons. And like I said, your patrons get a live shout out. So let me go ahead and get to that really quick. Uh, Blake Beals joining the DDT tier. Thank you, Blake. Uh, Tommy Medzus. He came in. He's got that rest hold tier going on. It's warming up. Uh, Tommy, thank you very much. And then uh, Drew Keelan coming in with that DDT, uh, DDT tier sister. as well. Um, that's my sister. That's your sister. Awesome. Nice. Man. Thank you guys for joining. <laughs> Family hey, love. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody that's uh, getting those sticker packs, I just got word today. The last of the sticker varieties is coming in Friday. I'll be hopping in all y'all's DMs uh, come Friday, Saturday. To go ahead and send out those packs for you guys. Thank you, thank you once again cool. um, for joining the Patreon, man. Uh, okay, so next up, man, this was a heavily, heavily campaigned for match ever since it was announced that uh, ever since it was announced that Cody Rhodes uh, would be defending his title against people not employed by AEW. Warhorse got this huge swell of momentum and uh, and wind in his sails. To get him in that match, he got in there to uh, he got in there, and uh, I I ain't gonna lie, man, I'm not gonna lie. Um, these matches are designed for like star making matches, uh -huh. and and I don't know if we got that with Warhorse. They they did everything they could to put the guy over by right. all means, but between the match being, I think one of the more forgettable matches that Cody's wow. had defending this title. I ain't gonna lie, man. I was and, gonna um, say the same thing. Like this wasn't either one of theirs. Yeah, I said, like I've seen and then, War Horse. Not to talking. mention, this was used to spoiler debut Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona. Right. The, yeah. This the moment Matt Cardona hopped on screen, uh, we didn't get a frame of Warhorse anymore. He, he no. was off the screen, and that was it. 
Um, I hear you. Um, here's the thing that I'm going to say just personally. Um, I was, I mean, I've heard of war horse and stuff before this, but I didn't ever see him wrestle before and didn't really know that much about him. So mm-hmm. I was all about it. Like that dude fucking rules. Like I want to see more of that no, he, guy. He, well, and I think that's more from where I'm coming from. Kind of like the opposite. I do know, know who he is and I yeah. have seen his matches and, this wasn't one of his better matches. No, and that's fair. I mean, I, I have no idea. You know he what had I'm a saying? Match on the July 11th um, Synergy wrestling match that we yeah. helped. Oh, sponsor. he did. Yeah, he was he was a late call in because the Alex Zane match uh, oh, okay. got pulled last second, and Warhorse stepped up. Uh, I forget who his opponent was, but he stepped up and he did a two out of three falls match, which was fantastic. Nice. Um, I think a lot of his the drawback for him too is there was no crowd. Like if there had been yeah. an actual crowd there, I think his I think it would have been a little bit different. The energy for the match and everything would have been a little bit different if there was a crowd. AJ Gray, yeah. thank you, thank you in the stream. They 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 promptly corrected me. Thank you guys. Um, no, I hear you. Um, because you could see a whole bunch of spots where he was like trying to play to the crowd and stuff right. like that, where there right. would have been like pops and stuff exactly. from some of the stuff that he was doing. And obviously without any well, crowd, I mean, you know, like, <laughs> I think the guy was just given an impossible task. Cause listen, yeah. man, hear me out, man, hear me yeah. out. So you have, you have all the hype in the world behind you, at least on the social media side of things. Right. But then you're not only, are you following, uh, the opening five, like 10 man tag match, which was awesome. You're yep. also following, uh, What's his name? Kingston. Alex Kingston, is it? From last week? Eddie. Eddie, Eddie Kingston. Kingston. Eddie Kingston. Excuse me. Oh, don't fucking... Don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Hey, but, um, but no, uh, Eddie Kingston last week... No, that was a better dude, match. That was he just, he just had a tough act to follow. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, it's... Uh, yeah, but I, I liked him. I ain't trying I to piss all over him. I really liked him, and hopefully this well, resonates a lot with of it is the too casual that we... audience. Yeah, well, a lot of these is too like these matches. He, they've knocked them out the fucking park. Yep. So when we finally get one that's not like lights out, yeah, like it kind of brings it down. Yeah. That's what I think this just was like because uh, Eddie Kingston match was fire. Um, Sunny Kiss promo. Was fire. Kingston got a promo opportunity. Where yes. Warhorse oh, didn't. He's, he's one yeah. of the, he's been one of the best promo guys in the shit in the last ten years probably. But that's what I'm saying. We've had so many great moments coming from these matches when we don't have one. Because it wasn't like a terrible match. It wasn't no, like it was trash. No, no, no. It just wasn't. It didn't live nah. up to all the hype of the rest of the matches. Well, and I think to your guys' point, too, it had a really fucking hard act to follow, too. Wow. I mean, that was. Um, but like I said, I mean, I think I was just a little more forgiving about it just because, like, I didn't really know anything about yeah. War Horse. And I was like, Jesus, this guy fucking rules. <laughs> they didn't so. any favors de- debuting a fucking Snatched Rider. Yeah, so that that felt disrespectful. I'm not going to lie. You bring Warhorse in to build him up, right? And you have this match and out comes two two lower members of the Dark Order to attack uh, Warhorse and Cody. Which the fact that they couldn't fend off those two guys is laughable in itself. Right. Um, Especially since they didn't like jump him from behind or they just crawled in the ring. And... So Warhorse was promptly thrown out the ring, and that was the last we saw him. That was that was yeah. it, because out comes Ryder. He gets the big uh, the big moment, the big reveal and debut. Um, and I think the only time we saw Warhorse was afterwards. You saw Ryder fist bump off frame, and I'm pretty sure that was Warhorse getting a fist bump. But they cut to commercial was, before they could show who yeah, it was. I thought it was right. Arn. Huh? I thought it was Arn right. Anderson. I that's, didn't even know. So that, that's what I'm saying is you don't even know who it is. And I felt like that did Warhorse dirty. I, well, I my really did. Like, yeah. My thing is like it was fucking Zack Ryder, bro. Like nobody, like come on, man. Like I understand if it was like a bigger star. Like all these people they could have got from WWE, and we're back to this. Well, Cody hiring his peoples. Yeah, like, I was bro, gonna say, aren't they, aren't they friends, Zack Ryder? Yeah, that's 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 my thing. Like if you're gonna hire people from WWE, you should. I mean, you're mm-hmm. a fledgling promotion. You're trying to build a roster. Some of those guys have name power. They have star power. But fucking Zack Ryder, a dude that ain't been on TV in months, even before he left there. Like, And then you interrupt, like you said, you took away what little shine you were giving Wars because he just got tossed to the fucking side by the Dark Order. Like, And, and then again, he got upstaged by Zack Ryder, of all people. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. Um, 
It's, it is what it is. It does. It does kind of. It does have kind of a, a smell of nepotism. Not gonna lie there. I, 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 I'm one of the first people that defend AEW, but even I, I wasn't the biggest fan of this. Uh, hopefully, Ryder kills it or Cordona kills it. Stop. In the chat, they're asking, "Hey, wouldn't it have been cool if Cordona joined the Dark Order?" I kind of yes. been into that. That would have been cooler I would have been than what happened. I'm not gonna lie. That part, if if something like that had happened, I would have fucking lost it because not just another person coming to kick it with Cody to yeah, turn on Cody. Exactly the Cody fan, like, bro. Like, and I love Cody <laughs> so much, and I love everything that he's doing so far. But this shit, hiring your friends, QT Marshall, all these lame ass dudes. Like, I come on, bro. Like, yeah. I can't, um, I can't get behind those. Can't do it. I know. We'll see. Um, Tony uh, Tony Schiavone is at the top of the ramp to introduce us to the next uh, AEW pay per view. We're getting all out again. Um, he said the date. I didn't catch the date. Did September I? September fifth. Thank you. Not, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So September fifth, all out to uh, Super Stoke. But before we could really get into that, out comes uh, Inner Circle again. They're pissing nah. and moaning about the match from <laughs> earlier. There was a nice joke in here. Um, they gave they gave Guevara the mic, and he's calling Matt Hardy a son of a bitch. And Jericho asks him, he says, "What's son of a bitch in Spanish?" And he's like, "Son of el bitch." <laughs> yeah, was, that was so good. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, I, I fucking died when I heard him say that shit. But um, I wish they could get like their own like being the elite show. Yeah, man. Oh my god, yeah, yes. that would be fire. We're getting yeah. uh. Jericho reveals we're getting Jericho and Cassidy too. They're gonna do a debate next week. He, <laughs> he dropped a hint that there's a special moderator, but he didn't tell who it was um, for next Wednesday, and then they'll have the official match the following week, uh, August twelfth. Um, and then we'll get we'll get the, uh, we'll uh, get Jericho Cassidy three at all out. I guarantee it. You think you think we'll do a trilogy out of this? Put it in the bank. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, why not? The last match they had was, I mean, it wasn't quite as good as I thought it was going to be, but it was decent. Yeah. And I think they could only do more with it, you know? I thought, I mean, for what Jericho is right now, I thought that first match was fucking fire. It was. If it was like, now, if this was like first first couple years in WWE, Jericho versus Orange Cassidy, it might have wow. been match of the year type shit. But for, for the fact that Jericho's a 50-year-old stiff old man and still... I thought that match was fucking excellent. Oh, don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I I didn't like it. I'm just saying that like I don't know. I thought it was hyped a little more than what it delivered. Maybe that's that's I all I was that. saying. I can see that. Yeah, uh, it's revealed that that jacket Jericho he needs that shit replaced, man. Apparently, it smells like cat piss <laughs> now. Cat um, piss. Yeah. I like I liked uh, Guevara's uh, reaction after. Uh, uh, Santana said that he was like, "Come on, man! You can't, you know, like you can't tell him that." It was, it was, so it was the joke from last week. Anything. It was just a play on the joke last week because he said, yeah. "Yeah, it still smells like oranges and shit." Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, no, it's it's dude, they're just the inner circle, man. They're they're fucking terrific. That's why that's that's the only like, well, one of the only AEW merchandise I own, man, is inner circle yep. shirt. That and that I I bought specifically for me. Well, I had I had Jessica buy it, but still. <laughs> But hey, man, I had the same thing. A uh, girlfriend bought me my Inner Circle shirt for my birthday. So, you Hell know. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, I only got a KT Marshall shirt, too. Forgot about that. Oh, the, Bob's in here saying Jericho looks like Greg Valentine. Stop it, Bob. <laughs> Stop oh, it. I mean. He looks like a smaller version. Like He looks like Stephen Valentine. Jeez. <laughs> Stupid. Um. <laughs> Uh, back, uh, back in the ring, or just back, back on the programming, uh, we get we get footage from earlier in the night. FTR's con- official contract signing from earlier in the day uh, to become part of uh, the official AEW roster. This was just gorgeous shit, man. This yep. was gorgeous. These guys are in here. It's a boardroom. It's a contract signing that did not end up with someone going through a table. That's a nice Sorry. touch. Um, <laughs> FTR says they didn't feel comfortable signing a tag team contract without a tag team specialist, so in comes Arn Anderson. That's very intriguing. And then um, 
they go over the clauses, make sure everything's right. It turns out that what they say, we're going to get a uh, tag appreciation night at All Out hosted by FTR. I'm interested to see what that results in. Well, I don't think they said it all out. I think they said August yes. 12th. I like think either... it was August 12th. Oh, okay. So either, ne- yeah, two weeks from now. So. All right, okay, two weeks from now, not all out. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, and then it ends with Hangman Page coming in, pouring everybody some some whiskey. And you see how he gives everyone a shot, and then he fills his damn glass. <laughs> Who's um, going to take these titles from them? Huh? It is. It is time, I, I just... man. I think they're going to be a faction. I think it's going to be FTR and Hangman. I think they're going to end up being a faction. Maybe. So the question. I is, mean, a lot of the a lot of the rumors about the faction though is Four Horsemen, obviously, and the big the big rumor is that it's going to be Cody, FTR, uh, and Sean Spears. Yeah, with, I of think course, so. Aunt Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard there. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense. I'm about it, you know. But who knows what they're really going to do? Fuck I mean, Sean Spears. It's got to be Hangman. What? <sighs> Yeah. I'm 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 with that too, you know. Uh, do you think they'll actually call it the Four Horsemen again, or are they gonna go ahead and just go their own direction and just let? I it don't be think they can call it. Just the allow horsemen. it to be implied. I don't think they can call it that. I think that WWE probably owns that trademark. I would imagine. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. There's probably yeah. What y'all think of uh, uh, the little jab that they threw at AEW's tag matches, saying specifically for their match <laughs> they can only do it. Uh, uh, they can only interfere for a ten count. The tag ropes have to be utilized. Yep. Pretty much highlighted the criticism of of the tag division. It was That's really- one thing I love about AEW. They're so self aware about that shit, mm-hmm. and they'll put it right into like their promos and shit. They're like, right. "Yeah, we hear you, fans. We hear you." Like, you know, it's so good. I love it. What would you That's think if they brought like. in Tessa Blanchard? Yeah, yeah. I they mean, need- I, I don't. I'm not all that familiar with her work. I know she's really good, and I think it would make sense, obviously, with her dad being there and all that stuff. And uh, the women's division kind of got thin really quick all of a sudden over an AEW with uh, injuries and shit. So, I mean, they... Even before the injuries, the, the women's division really is ass. So that's me me personally. Like, I think that's incorrect. That's the, win- they are n- the women's division is not ass anymore. No, not anymore. No, not anymore. But it's, but it was, it's not on the level of NXT or, you no, know. No, not even close. But, but I, it, I don't think it's fair to say their women's division is ass. I feel I mean, like it's, they are was, definitely making strides. Was it's, ass. It it's was. way, way oh, improved. Yeah, absolutely. It, it I came mean, off to a hard I'm saying, start. Yeah. What I'm saying is, though, being that they're an upstart promotion, like I'm not going to hold them, hold it against them signing any and everybody they can, especially if it's somebody that has the name that Tessa oh, Blanchard. Yeah. That's I was be a draw in and of itself. If sure. I was in, they need to do any and everything they can to sign every free agent they can. Like you, at the end of the day, we can talk about this AEW NXT shit all we want, but they are still getting their ass kicked by SmackDown, which is probably the worst wrestling show in the history of fucking wrestling. <laughs> yeah, and they still can't get more viewers than SmackDown on a Friday night when people are out <laughs> drinking it and kicking and shit and not home. So my thing, the the Bruce, caveat caveat I'd give you there. And I hear you. It is definitely the worst show of the big four. <laughs> but it's it's on network television. It's on Fox, which that, get, that station again, is going to get more viewers no matter what the fuck they put on. And I, I understand that, too. But I think it would still beat them even if it wasn't. If it was still on CW or whatever it was on, it would still get more views than AW because it's an established product. So that's my point. Like, take the names you can get. Ru- yeah. All these Rusev and all these guys, even... The Good Brothers, like all these dudes, like they should have wasted no time signing these fuckers up every chance they got. Who cares where they came from or even what baggage they have? At this point, like they're like a shitty team in the NFL. Like you don't care about somebody fast with the other team. You got you need somebody to win games now. Sign up any and everybody you can until until you can get your homegrown players up to the point where their star power is worth something. But until then, you got to do what you got to do. Hey man, the Bills signed Terrell Owens like ten years ago. You know, that was that shit insane. But uh, same idea. Apparently, <laughs> right. um, uh, apparently, news reports came out. Rusev said he's done with wrestling and is now a professional Twitch streamer. Yeah, that's what I heard too. I, I don't know, like that I don't know how much like I buy it, it be, but yeah, that, that seems I like that like could be a word. Good, it's a good red herring, you know. Try yeah. to try to swell down like any like. 
hype on he might be debuting just to try to get right. that extra pop. Um, so we got a uh, Dark Order taking on uh, Hangman Page and Omega for the championship. Uh, did you notice that uh, Anna J has been scooped up by the Dark Order? Oh, yeah. yeah, you yeah. know she she did a long time ago actually. Uh, like it was the second a few week. weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was a. I mean, I think it was even maybe a little bit longer ago than that. Like it might have been like a little over a month ago, actually. At this point, I don't remember for sure, but um, I was waiting and waiting and waiting to see when she was gonna like come with them because mm-hmm. I thought it was cool as shit that they uh, recruited like a female member. I thought it made a lot of sense, and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't digging the 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 uh, outfit though. It definitely reeked of bunny. And, yeah, uh, I was gonna. Say, that, at bunny first, that's what I thought it was. Bunny fell on its face. Huge. Uh. Jesus. Yeah, I wasn't digging that look. But hey man, she's in there. You got you got uh you got uh Cabana. I love how I love how they're treating Cabana. Like mm-hmm. they're acknowledging that he's still a good guy, so they're trying <laughs> to like blind him from all the, the vile shit that they do. I think yeah. that's a very nice touch. Like that I think that's a they very did the, nice they did the touch. same thing with uh they did the same thing with Anna Jay tonight. They they ushered both of them out yeah. uh when they started when uh Brody Lee started going off, you know. So So I'm going to come out and say this really now. Right now. I'm going to come out and fucking say it. God damn it, dude. Brody Lee is having a rough go of it uh, in this Dark Order. Is and, and no offense to him. Like, before, before, I just want to, I want to highlight something else. It, it's, it's not a knack at Brody Lee. Is Stu Grayson and Evil Uno were putting the work in for the Dark Order. Like, yeah. they were putting the work in and they were building me up as a fan. And then watching them in the ring tonight proves these guys have a lot of talent oh yeah (laughs) and it's unfortunate they had to take a back seat for brody lee and and i see why AEW did it but i feel like this is definitely going to go down in history as a hiccup because since brody lee's tenure with the dark order the dark order was starting to be coming up as a threat go back and watch previous episodes of the smack draw podcast we were we were covering it that dude, Dark Order. I is, was on one the, of those shows where I said yeah. I was so down for this shit. I yeah. wish that they would. My, they shouldn't have never. They should have flipped it. They should have let Mark, Mark, not Mark. They should have let fucking uh, Matt Hardy take over the Dark Order, and Brody Lee should be wrestling with the Elite and with the Young Bucks and with all these guys. He should be wrestling yeah. every goddamn week. That's the whole reason the, yeah. he signed him to begin with. And it, it doesn't. It doesn't help that if you if you go over. And watch Being the Elite, which is like semi-canon um, for the show Dynamite. Right. The the Dark Order are totally the comedy, are totally comedic act. Um, right. Uh, for the whole thing. And so it's just taking away their legitimacy, which which is unfortunate because I, I was becoming a huge fan of Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. And tonight they brought that freaking passion back. They killed it in that match. Oh yeah. Um, especially well, the Evil Super, Uno, the man. Super so Smash cool. Brothers. Super Smash Brothers are one of my favorite indie tag teams. Like even back maybe like eight nine years ago, PWG and everything. Like I told, I think we had this show with the three of us, and I said how dope they were and how I wish that they would add somebody else to it and like just keep adding people to it. But like mm-hmm. this shit is ass, bro. Like I know Brody Lee wanted to show he has character and wanted to show he could do something because he didn't get to do shit in WWE, and I understand that. But this ain't it, bro. I'm this you. ain't it. Yeah, it's, and you can tell because it was, ah. it was backup. He was he was a backup choice. It came out Marty Skrull was supposed to be it, yeah. and right. last second signed on with Ring of Honor, stuck around with them, and so it's like, it damn, Marty you, you, you have a guy filling a role he didn't originally audition for, which stuff happens, man. It happens, and and I in the beginning, I will say this: in the beginning, it had all the tools to succeed. It really mm-hmm. did. Brody Lee is a big name, big character and everything, but it's just not translating and the Dark Order are just becoming this joke at the behest of Lee. Like Lee is imploding at the failures of the Dark Order when they were originally whooping ass every week just about. I don't think it ever fit because my thing is like I it was sort of like the Corbin effect, bro. Like I don't think I don't like when the dude's eight foot tall and all his all the people around him are five foot ten, and those are supposed to be the guys that are taking care of him and looking out for him and protecting his ass. Yeah. When, 
Like that, like now, if it, I, I don't know. It's just, it never worked for me from the go, beginning. Like I was back, never. Go back with the cinematic promos, the, the pre-tape shit. That right. Oh my God, doing. that shit was fire. Get, get that stuff, get that stuff back on yeah. track, man. Uh, go back to what was working. Re- I just want to see him wrestle. Lee to use and start giving them some fucking wins. Start giving them some wins. I th- I think that that's important. But the only yeah. way I could see that like this might work is that like maybe the Dark Order's looking to like uh, turn on Brody Lee, perhaps. That's, maybe that's the direction this has to go. Yeah, maybe the maybe Banner's gonna take over. I think he I think he'll do a better job of it than Brody Lee. Cause and my thing is too is like I want to see Brody Lee wrestle. I haven't seen him wrestle in three years. Yeah. He was he was off for two years. He did like two matches in two years in WWE, and his whole thing of getting free was so he could wrestle. When's he gonna wrestle? Yeah, has he, he wrestled since he fought Moxley? I I mean, if he has, it was a squash match. You know? Yeah, he hasn't had very many. If um, he had. I know he beat the piss out of one kid, if I remember correctly. This poor kid, man, he looked like he was like eighteen. Um, <laughs> But anyways, the match between uh, Dark Order, uh, Stu Grace and Evil Uno, and Hangman Page and, and Omega was really good. And there were some near falls that got you thinking maybe those belts were coming off of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ultimately, it didn't. Uh, you see Brody Lee usher Anna Jay to the back. You actually hear him uh, on the commentary because that's where Cabana was all night on commentary putting over Brody Lee. How nice it is uh, how Brody Lee is helping him get victories and shit like that. Um, you actually hear Brody Lee uh, like get up. You got to go to the back. Um, <laughs> they, uh, yeah, he, he he disciplines the uh, evil Uno publicly, but then um, they surround the ring. Dark Order members, the Creepers, they come out of nowhere. They're surrounding uh, Young Bucks and Hangman Page and Omega because Young Bucks are in the ring now. And um, fucking FTR comes, dumps, does a beer bath on uh, Brody <laughs> Lee essentially. And and the Dark Order are dismantled like with fucking ease, and it it just broke my heart, man. It broke my heart watching that shit, um, because I was I was a big fan, man. I was a big fan. What breaks my heart is fa- this face version of FTR, bro. I want them to be heels. Yeah. Oh, they will be. Yeah. I well, I think they're teetering on that. Like they're waiting for a, a good moment to like do that hard heel turn because I they're not. I mean, they're not really baby faces either right now. You know what I'm saying? Like they're if you're with the Bucks, you're the baby face. Well no, I, I, I hear you there. Yeah. And that's but what I'm saying. Definitely is. there's a rivalry there too. And so yeah, what I'm saying is there's that, that tease there the whole time, even though they're like it's almost like a big brother, little brother thing. They're like, yo, we can fuck up the Bucks, but nobody else can. You know what I'm saying? That's kind, like, of, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. But uh, but no 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 they're just they're waiting they're biding their time to take away Hangman Page from Omega to just break yeah. up the elite it, and that's what it sounds like you it is actually kind of cool to, that um you have multiple factions trying to dismantle the elite Dark yes. Order is trying to drive a wedge FTR is trying to drive a wedge inner, uh, inner circle the, even inner circle the as well is, yeah. the elite is not even really a fucking thing because like when they nah. get, they get their ass kicked. They don't come out and help each other or anything. Like the elite is literally just like, it's like a like we all go to the same gym or something. Like we're not really, <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We're not really like hanging out afterwards. But I don't get it. like we say hi to each other, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> um, role model uh, Britt Baker. She uh, says that at one point she's gonna have a match with Big Swole whenever she heals up, but. In order to get that match, Swole's going to have to take on an opponent of her choosing. Who do you think that's going to be? I don't even know. I, they got to debut somebody. They have to. I say yeah, Austin Kong. That, ooh, I'd be, oh, I'd be about that. the whole That'd point cool. of setting of, like, arranging your opponent's opponent, it has to be somebody that is perceived as, like, a monster or just yeah. unbeatable. Right. And I don't think Nyla Rose would be the right choice. I don't think Nyla Rose is going to take orders from fucking um, Britt Baker. But yeah, I could see Awesome Kong returning they? and doing that. Yeah, yeah. I think Awesome Kong's probably – it's either – I would agree. It's got to be either Awesome Kong or probably somebody that's, like, debuting, somebody new. Right. You know, like 
Um, cause I mean, they're trying to push their women's division a little bit more too now. I mean, obviously with the, uh, you know, women's tag tournament and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's why I think they're going to debut somebody. Oh, what about, uh, Abaddon? Could you imagine if she was able to like talk Abaddon into that? That'd be cool. How do you, how do you, how do you conjure Abaddon? I don't know, but I want to see more of her. That's for goddamn sure. I didn't real Abad- I didn't realize Abaddon is actually like a, a known fictional like demon type thing until oh, I, I caught my either. wife watching. Uh, um, oh, demon fuck. porn. No, 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 no. Sam and Dean. God damn it. Supernatural. Oh. And one of the demons they were trying to vanquish was Abaddon. I was like, ah, fucking I've heard that name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that either. Yeah. Uh, the chat over here uh, says maybe Azure Kong. That would make sense, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's y'all's take on Diamante? She had a really good match last week, in my opinion. I thought it was a decent match. Uh, looks like George Lopez. Huh? She looks like George Lopez. God damn it, bro. Come on, man. Holy shit. <laughs> <You> bastard. Wow. <laughs> bastard. Nah, I like her. I like her all right. I mean, this was kind of like, for me, like, <laughs> I hate to say it, because, like, Hikaru Shida is, like, easily the best yeah. woman on, uh, you know, the AEW roster. I love Shida. She's, like, I love her. Yeah. Um, this was kind of the throwaway match for me tonight, yeah. you know? I, not that there was, like, it was good. Don't get me wrong. Like, there were, um, I enjoyed They're it. better. It was kind of shitty. It was a couple spots in there. It was like where the other chick like just like either blanked or didn't do something she was supposed to do. And she wow. just had to do something else to like close the gap on it and stuff. Yeah. Like they had one spot where they just stood in the middle of the ring. And like she did, like she was like, what? And she just bounced off the ropes and like hit her. Like it was, oh, uh, it was, it was rough. Eh. I don't know. Maybe I didn't notice that shit. I just like, I mean, I've seen Diamante on Dark a few times and shit yeah. like that, too, and she's been doing her thing. I mean, I, I, um, I mean, you knew who Sheeta was going to beat her, any, right. you know, from the jump. So it was like, to me, <laughs> like, regardless of what happened in the match, like, right. I'm just not invested in a match like that, right. you know, like. But you need these kind of matches, though, especially since your, your division isn't what it should be. Oh, yeah. Be. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm Absolutely. not mad. Like, she should do like, like Cody's been doing, like, give a woman. An opportunity ever. If you beat me, then you get a title shot. Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Like, bring in. Like I said, I'm I'm all for them bringing in anybody, signing people, even bring people off the goddamn street. Like, you're a fledgling promotion. Do what you got to do. No, I completely agree with you. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, it was like you guys said. It was it was just kind of not like a throwaway match. It was just it was supposed to be kind of like a showcase match. Um, Right. Get this girl on the scene. She had a, a, her match uh, last week with Eva Lee was really good. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Eva definitely. Had, I thought it was they better. had awesome chemistry. Yeah, um, yeah Eva Lee is next level though. Like Eva Lee is better than Sheeta for real. Um, this was the part where Nyla Rose was backstage with her, uh, with her new manager. I uh, fucking love it, man. Vicky yeah, Guerrero's back on TV. I I didn't I didn't realize I missed Vicky till I saw her. And I was like, oh yeah, you're you're fucking awesome, man. I love it, but I don't want Nyla to say anything. I want Nyla go to go back to being that beast that just fucking sat there and growled. Yep. Like, yeah. what's yep. the point of having a mouthpiece if you're still talking? Shut the fuck up and let Vicky do what she does best. Annoy the shit out of us. And make us hate you. Like, <laughs> shut up. Don't say anything. Let Vicky do her job. That's what you that's what you yeah. got her for. No, agreed. Yeah, she just needs to sit there and look scary. That's all right. Nyla needs to do. I hope, I hope they let her get a, a faction. Let her do get a female faction. Yeah, that would be cool. That would definitely be cool. So apparently this women's tag tournament is kind of like a roulette style. Because it had it saw Nyla reach in a bag of poker chips. And I guess you pull out a poker chip. It's a colored chip. Whoever draws the color, I guess, is your tag team partner. And that's what happened here. She -hmm. pulled out a poker chip, and they revealed to her, like, oh, someone else has already got that color. And then that's how they uh, debut Ariana Andrews, or a.k.a. Cameron, former Funkadactyl. Um, Black Lion. I'm not going to shit on Cameron because I haven't seen the matches. I'm just going to say this. I haven't heard the nicest things said about her. Um, Listen, of everybody on our crew, I never stopped watching wrestling. I lived through this shit. 
She was a terrible dancer. She was supposed to be a background dancer for uh, the, one of the funk and doctors. She couldn't dance, and she couldn't wrestle. She was ass. I, and yes, she's a black woman. I'm sorry. One band, one sound. Shout out to Black Wrestling Podcast, but she is terrible, bro. Yeah, I, I'll just take your word for it. Yeah, I really, exactly. I am I, not. <laughs> we have no grounds to. Uh-huh. One way or the but other. So, Nyla Rose better not tag her in. I know that. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's going to be how they lose, obviously. I mean, if that, if that isn't more obvious, that's how you're going to get them out of the tournament. Yep. Oh, that's definitely um, going to So let's talk about this. MJF delivers the speech on the state Christ. of wrestling. Holy shit. Se- seg- segment of the night. Segment, segment of, the, of night. the fucking god damn month at least yes yeah probably a month like dude this i mean a- i knew that guy had it on the mic but holy shit i didn't know he had it like oh, this that. might be you know, i'm nxt to the heart but this might be one of the best segments of any show yeah like um, legit yeah he, no like like i said i it was fully good. anticipate to watch all the youtube like wrestling news videos and channels this be like one of the headline things Oh yeah, I, I I already know people are gonna refer to it as the pipe bomb. When I was on Twitter, I saw way more people in favor of this than than against it. Um, MJF just kept it fucking real on so many things. He touched on it's gonna be hard because it's not like we're sitting here recapping something. And what made it great was his delivery, his mm-hmm. delivery and tr- the truth in what he was saying. You didn't so, doubt anything. Yeah. Can I just say one thing, though? Yeah. Did he not say 90% of all the things I've been saying about Gene Ambrose since he's been at AW? <laughs> oh, did he not? Did he? Did, that's all I'm saying. Like, I was on my Negro Dama shit tonight. I'm just telling you. I'm telling that. you, oh. man. Um, <laughs> yo, yeah, he he talked on, um, he made a lot of references to, like, Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. he, uh, he talks about how his talent overweighs uh ambrose's tenure or excuse me moxley's tenure oh i and popped for that line alone Jesus i was like Christ, holy shit, is not but, um, around. no but everything he went in on he went in on on the uh on the ratings everyone's talking ratings but apparently if you look at the minute for minute he draws more people than anyone else on the aw roster i can see Rats. that too like i i mm-hmm. i was like i'm not gonna sit here and deny that <laughs> it's like, no, I could def- either Either you watch when he's on the screen because you genuinely like him, or you <laughs> fucking hate him, and you're just yeah. like, I want to, yeah. So, um, yeah. I just and, spread the word. And one, thing that, one thing that I did like that he addressed with conviction and passion was um, was the whole referring to AEW as the alternative. Yeah. And, he, and he came for the throat, man. He's like, we're not, I don't, where, why settle for being the alternative? We need to be the pinnacle. And I, mm-hmm. dude, I am all about fucking repping your team. I've said this so many times. A lot of people online just like, why can't all wrestling companies just get along? It's because they're competing businesses. They're competing right. for your viewership, your dollars. No one wants to settle for second. No one wants to say, I'm just, I'm the alternative. You know, this was the this is the argument we were having in our group chat. I said that same exact shit. Don't say you're an alternative program when you're not doing anything alternative. Yeah, stand up on your feet and say what the fuck you are. Yeah. I came to. I want everybody that you lose. I'm trying to steal your talent, yeah. and I want to be where you're at. Yeah. Say it, and that, mean it, stand up on it. I'm telling you, man, MJF's the shit, bro. Yeah, he's yeah, the shit. I fucking love him, bro. Play, like this right simple, here. Man. He's the best heel in wrestling right now. As far yeah. As yeah. Like no, no, no question, no question. Oh, well, by, just like by like the way, just the, I was just gonna his, say, just just to set the scene. This was in the middle of the ring, and it was definitely the American like State of the Union themed. Like this mm-hmm. was definitely yeah. a play on the presidential campaign. I don't know if I made that apparent enough, but um, yeah, well, sorry. I, there was even like a, a American flag in the background. Yeah. American it, flag, it, AEW there. flag, yeah. like. The thing that gave me chills about it was you looked in his eye. This was not a fucking promo. No. This 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 is this was he meant every goddamn yeah. word of it. it. May not it may not have been serious, but in some way, shape, shape or form, he meant every goddamn word he said. Like there was For a sure. fire in his eyes that was undeniable. Like when that's yeah. when 
you just kind of see somebody when they hit it and they hit that stride in the ring and that fucking light bulb goes off. Like, that shit gave me chills looking at him when he was just staring right in the fucking camera, spitting everywhere and shit, and his eyes balls out. Looked like he just hit a line and shit, bro. I was like, damn, I love this shit, bro. <laughs> No, yeah, no, you're you're totally right. It reminds me of like those fucking crazy promos that you'd get like in the uh, you know late '80s, early '90s with like you know Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage, Ric Flair. You know when they really yeah. did like go and like they were blowing lines right before they came out <laughs> on TV, Jesus and they were like you know just red faced and just screaming yes. at the camera and shit. You know, like yeah, it was a it was definitely like an old school. Uh, type of promo that's like it's a lost art these days i feel like and but mjf can fucking do it man yeah He's man good at it you know yeah. and no one can articulate like him that's the thing yeah. the guy doesn't the guy just doesn't stumble um but it was great shit uh he declares he's having the title match with moxley at uh at oh. all out the uh, one line that he put in there he was like yo i'm gonna be the face of this ch- uh company for the next 25 years mm-hmm. and he was like go grab a calculator and do the math was that a was that a, a flex or a, a, a some shade thrown at Jericho? Is it is Maybe. Jericho? I mean, because he no, I mean, because he went in on everybody. There, there was yeah. there was no nobody was safe. I, I hear you, but like MJF just turned twenty four, right? And mm-hmm. Jericho, I'm pretty sure is forty nine. Yeah. So twenty four plus twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. You know. Yeah. Um. No, the last, the last thing about this was, yeah, he did drive home that uh, that AEW was supposed to be the land of opportunity, and uh, it's all about the new the new guys, the old guards dead, and and he addressed it straight to the face. Your your mm-hmm. first two champions are guys who came over from WWE, and they are they are the old guard. You know yep. what I mean? He he didn't shy away from any of that shit. He he pretty much did just like channel his inner rn and fucking <laughs> it all out i mean room. he literally did everything he said like it, i was just sitting there like holy shit is this motherfucking my dms like how's he know like he literally <laughs> said everything i've been saying about AEW for the past year yeah uh, even before i got on the podcast the, the, the overly high-flying matches um now nah, man he called out everything Nah, and it did. was nice, man. It was nice. It's nice when you can air that shit out. You know what I mean? Well, and to me, that was like to the point that I was making about like the uh, FTR uh, contract signing. It's AEW being self-aware about you mm-hmm. know the shit that they that people are saying about them and potentially stuff that they might want to change and shit too. Who knows? You know what I mean? So like, I really, uh, I really respect that, and that's part of the reason why I really like AEW. You know. Cause they aren't afraid to be dirty, you know, about like the shit that's going on. They're like, yeah, we can fuck up. Not only can we fuck up, but we can say it, you know, just the way that you're saying it and uh, cut a killer fucking promo with somebody like MJF that can just say all that shit and be like, boom, what, what are you going to say about me? What, what, I think I've seen, I've seen a clip of Taz talking shit and he said, it's not that, He's like, yeah, people are always bitching about us bringing up WWE and all this other shit. He was like, it's not that. We're not doing it because of that, you jackasses. He said, we're doing it to show you that we don't think, we know you're not that fucking stupid. You know and we know that they exist and all this stuff exists. Yep. We're doing that to show you we know you're smarter than that. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I like about them. I hate yep. that they bring up WWE all the fucking time, but I do like, the, like you said, the self-awareness and showing us we hear you. We see you. We're trying to fix it. Yeah, yep. and and I feel like for for a fledgling company like you know like AEW, it's absolutely punching up <laughs> to yeah. talk shit about WWE. So like I don't I don't necessarily have a problem with it for that reason because like from what you know I learned from comedy, <laughs> uh, generally speaking, is that you should you should never punch down. <laughs> you know. Right. And I feel like if WWE was out there talking shit about AEW, it would absolutely be punching down. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because yeah. WWE isn't going anywhere. They're they're there. They're you know, uh, AEW might not be a thing in four to five years, depending on what happens. You know, you never right. know. You so come out swinging, that's what you yeah. do. You come out swinging. Um, how about this main event, man? Ricky Starks, Brian Cage. 
taking on Darby Allen, John Moxley. Uh, Darby Allen misses his entrance. This had me thinking, like, oh shit, he really is concussed from uh, right. from last <laughs> week's uh, that nasty shot he took from Starks. But uh, they, Taz, Cage, Ricky Starks, they cut a promo that kind of overstayed its welcome um, backstage. Yeah. Didn't really amount to anything. I, I think I think it actually I, I think it benefits <clears throat> Starks the most. Yeah, it, yeah. Agreed. He showed he's got he's got a, a wealth of personality. But I, I like oh, it. They fine. come out. They come out the entrance. This has given us a long time to resonate with the fact that Allen is not there. And as they come out the entrance, out of fucking nowhere, Darby oh Allen coffin drops off that entrance way onto the both of them, and then this kicks off the no disqualification. <clears throat> I lost my match. shit. I completely yeah. lost my shit when yeah. he did it. Like he, Darby <laughs> Allen is gonna fucking die. Like he's gonna die one of these days. And doing something crazy. Like, how how the hell do you they, have the balls to do a coffin drop off of that goddamn when, thing? When WWE puts this puts Evolve on the network this year, y'all motherfuckers better go back and watch Darby Allen Because you think, that, like, he hasn't even done half the crazy shit he's done when he did what he's involved. Like, I don't even know how the hell he made it to AEW. I don't know how he made it out of Evolve, to be honest. I'm, I'm becoming like, the old worrying pan- parent, and I'm trying too. not to, like, say... Okay, Darby, let's retire that coffin drop. Like I'm trying not to be that person, right? But God, if no, he doesn't I look so mind. dangerous, don't. even even tonight, there was yeah. a scary spot because Moxley was delivering the paradigm shift, and Darby fire. did a uh, Oof. Darby did the coffin drop onto a uh, I forget who it was, but they were hunched over, and he went too far back, and so he rotated off the guy and landed on his fucking head. Yeah, and it's just like God, man. Oh, it's it's one of the scariest moves in wrestling right now, but it's also one of the coolest moves in wrestling too. Yeah, is, you know, I I did crack this joke what it the is. other just day. Fall. <laughs> yeah, I did crack this joke yeah. the other day that I want someone to do a compilation of because uh, the closest thing you have to this move is um, Kofi Kingston's trust fall. Yeah, where he turns and does he essentially does the same move but with his arms yeah. out. And I was like, dude, someone give me a compilation of Kofi doing that, make it black and white, and put Darby Allen's music on it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, Not- dude, Darby's Darby's a fucking madman. This match, yeah. this match, I mean, there's really no need to go back and talk about spot for spot. I think so. This sure. gets this gets my match of the night vote. If you're gonna watch one match from the event, go back watch the main event. Um, it it crescendos with uh, Darby Allen pulling out a thumbtack skateboard. I'm glad oh, they took the trucks so off finally, awesome. dude. Keeping the trucks and wheels on the shit is super dangerous. Although I don't think they've had them on there. But um, anyways, oh Ricky Starks eats it to the back, hunched over, and it slid. So it's supposed to like spike down and come off. But it stomped nope, it and then do that. slid and it shredded that dude's fucking back up. Oh, that he looked painful. Dude, he was bleeding all yeah. over the place. That looked terrible. If you, guys, if you guys aren't hip to Starks, you guys need to go back and watch some the NWA. Like, I went back after that first match. Like, I knew who he was and I seen a couple of his matches with NWA. But after that match with Cody, I went back and watched some of it. It's all on YouTube. And, like, he is – he's lights out and he, on yeah. the mic. That kid is something else on the mic. I noticed that tonight. <laughs> so Bob in the chat says, um, uh, Darby Allen is the opposite of New Jack. Instead of trying to, uh, he's trying to kill himself instead of other people. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, yeah, Sebastian uh, uh, sung uh, Ricky Stark's praises like a motherfucker when he first de- uh, debuted on uh, AEW. He was like, yeah. uh, same shit that you were saying, you know, like his work in NWA was lights out and, uh, because he was he he got a title in NWA he was a for a minute. Champ. There you go. Okay, yeah. So obviously he was legit, you know, before. Um, and yeah, I mean, give me more of that dude. Uh, honestly, like there hasn't been much of him in AEW, and everything he's done so far, I, it's been must see TV as far as I'm concerned. You, you don't know? need Taz. I can tell you that. Brian no. Cage needs Taz. Ricky don't need Taz. Well, right, Taz, right. Taz is being utilized well too. Yeah, uh, with that backstage promo, Taz got on the mic and he didn't eat up all of the promo time. He cut just yeah. enough of a promo, but then 
called up Brian Cage, called up uh, Ricky Starks, and backed off. That's good. That's that's yeah. that's smart. Um, by the way, I just uh, I I love that we have Taz every week again. Yes, Taz was one of my favorite parts of fucking SmackDown back in the day, man. And it is Taz just having Taz on commentary um, was amazing. We uh-huh. were missing Excalibur tonight, weren't we? Well, yeah. there was that yeah. controversy that was yeah. going on with him. What uh, happened? We'll touch on that. On that's not on the recording. Like we won't. We won't. Okay, I'll, that I'll leave it alone. Recording, but no. yeah, um, yeah, that could be a touchy subject too. Yeah, right, honestly. So. Um, but anyways, yeah. <clears throat> so that was really good after the match because uh, Darby Allen he obviously got the victory with that shit. Um, it, this, yeah, how could you know, he this, not? This Jesus. is the part I don't like, and I forget who brought it up. I, I think it was Sebastian. Is they are so quick to have like the next match that's in line because not but like 30 seconds after Darby Allen pinned Starks uh he's eyeballing Moxley they get just enough time to say oh Darby Allen's eyeing the AEW championship and then like the very next thing oh it's just announced number five ranked Darby Allen gets a title shot next week yeah and it was just like I'm not mad at it though like I'm not mad at the match it's just weird how it's paced like how how it comes to be, yeah. I, and I know why they're doing it. They're trying to be more like UFC, and that's how UFC does their match. You, got, you gotta have like, your next show lined up. You're already promoting the next show because we saw this. Yeah, like, that's, there's that's like literally how UFC does. Like randomly, the number seven guy gets a title shot out of nowhere because he was there at the fucking like. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I I don't I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand what they're doing there. Like you said, they're booking the next show while the, this show's going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't have a problem with that necessarily either. But it, I feel like they they overutilize that yes, sort of a thing absolutely. in AEW because it feels like every week they do it almost where it's like something like that will happen. Like two dudes that are in the right. main event will just do that, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, by the way, before we go off air, you know, tune in yeah, next week." These guys to beat the piss out of each other. Or, or I'm not least, gonna lie. I'd rather say pre-tape footage of like Tony Khan being like, "That match was great. Book it now." You know what I mean? Right. Like just that just would like, be cool. You could that would to be Tony cool. Khan for like five the, seconds. The flip side is we could get the WWE treatment where they just drop a feud completely and then another guy gets a title shot or yeah, that's true. <laughs> gets a title shot. Like, what the, why does he get a U.S. title match? What happened? Yeah, yeah, at least there's at least there's context. Yeah, at least yeah, it no, makes I mean, sense. Yeah, no, I, yeah, minor gripe, minor gripe. That's not, why not I, that's why as... I take it with a grain of salt because at least we're getting something. At least we're not just dude comes back from TV nine months later. Oh, he's in a title match. I yeah. do like that we constantly have something to look forward to. They do give you that a lot of the times. How many mm-hmm. times have we rolled up Monday night or Friday night and not have a clue yeah. what going we're going to get on Raw or yeah. SmackDown? Although I kind of like having both aspects. You know what I'm saying? I like knowing what some of it's going to be, but I like having like not not knowing the whole card, like on a on a I weekly don't... basis. You know, I, I guess it's because I love Japanese wrestling so much. But that's how Japanese wrestling is. Like they let you know what the yeah. next thirteen fucking shows are. Like I know all the matches that are happening like in September already. They already <laughs> got the whole card played out yeah. and shit. So like, no, I I said... I, I'm kind of like you. I'll take a little bit of both. Like give, at least give me a couple matches. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a matter of taste as far as I'm concerned. Because I like when I would do the show with Rob all the time. He was like, I fucking hate Twitter and all that shit because I don't want to know what's going right. to happen. You know, I want it to be a surprise. And the thing is, is that it kind of was back in the day. You know, like during the Attitude Era and shit like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, unless there was like a really big match that you were getting like on a Nitro or Raw, you didn't know it was going to happen week to yeah. week. Right. You know. Well, let's go ahead. Let's wrap this up, man. That was that was our AEW recap, man. Thank you guys for joining us in the live chat. Um, had a lot of fun tonight. RN, thank you for coming by tonight. Yeah, it's cool. It's fun, new man. People on um, new people on uh, on the AEW show. We had we had Sebastian on last week. Ever since Rob was gone, we're kind of like just trying new stuff out, man. Yeah. Shout out to Rob, by the way. I miss you, bud. Yeah, uh, crazy rude for life. Yeah, man. <laughs> But um, one last has- time, uh, go ahead. If if you're in the chat, uh, K Dog, let them know about the Discord channel. I'll be over there. Um, maybe you guys 
will hook us up. Maybe you guys hop in the chat too for a little bit on Discord. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And then um, I could do that for a minute. Yeah. Also, yeah, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff with the podcast. Download it, leave a review, all that great stuff. But please, like I said, genuinely, man, support us on Patreon, uh, and 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 we'll be eternally grateful. But uh, I, you know what? You know what? I do this every week. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, you sign us off, bro. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I, I appreciate you all, especially uh, the the patrons out there. Um, you know, uh, I'll be calling Kyle's wife a little bit later. Peace. She knows. <laughs> uh, she knows what's good. <laughs> <laughs>